Alright guys, welcome back to a new video. I hope you enjoyed the quick reel at the beginning. I had a bunch of shots I took last winter when I was going to ski. They look great, but they didn't fit in any particular video on their own. So I figured now was a great time to use them. Anyway, today we're going to talk about Dehancer. If you don't know what that is, Dehancer is a film emulation plugin that works with your video editing software of choice. So for me, that's DaVinci Resolve, but it also works with Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro from what I understand. I had been eyeing this plugin for quite some time because it looks like it can do some stuff that are really cool and I really thought I wanted to try it at some point so when Dehancer reached out uh, back in I think it was around New Year I'm so sorry Dehancer it took me so long to get around to doing this but it's here now um, so when they reached out and asked me if I wanted to try the plugin and why not make a review about it after I you know learned it and used it for some time I was yeah absolutely very excited about it so I've used it quite extensively now and I think I made up my mind on you know how good it is and who this is potentially for. So if you want to learn a bit more about it, if you'd like to see some color grading stuff or just hang out where we edit some stuff, let's jump into DaVinci. All right guys, cool. So we're now in DaVinci in my timeline for the intro. Let's jump to the color page. And okay, so first of all, I'll uh, show you how I've been doing it so far and you know a lot of people do it. If you want the film emulation look just with DaVinci you can do it but it's more tedious. So you need an input device transform, output device transform and LUT just to get that look. So in the input device transform, if you don't understand any of this stuff then it's a good sign that Dehancer is going to make your life easier and after this part I'll show you Dehancer. So this was shot on a DJI Air 2S drone so we'll select our input color space will be DJI D gamut, DJI D log. I could leave a uh, use timeline because I set it in my color management uh, settings, but just for the sake of showing you, DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate, and input is done. Now we need to output these to Rec 709. So use timeline, once again, I just did it, I showed you. We choose color space Rec 709, and the output gamma has to be uh, Cineon because DaVinci film emulation log, uh, LUTs will only accept a Cineon film log profile. So, ouch! This is what you get. Don't worry, next node in LUT, you go in LUT, choose film looks, and I'll use, use whatever you want to use really, but I'll use the Rec 709 Kodak 2383 D55 for this one. And boom, this is what you have. Uh, it, you know, it's what it should look like, I guess, but you're nowhere near looking good. So you still need to do some work and this is where you need to have some degree of knowledge of, you know, Da Vinci. So if I were to try to make this look good, I'd probably do three extra nodes. So nodes keep pointing up. This one, I do it like, uh, well, let's just do exposure real quick. I do more than this, but just to get, give you the general gist, I'd adjust the exposure. I don't know, somewhere like this looks good. Then in this one, I try to inject a bit of drama. So I probably go in gain. Try to make this like yellow greenish, which is kind of what I did in my video. And then in this one, I probably play with the saturation a bit. So I'd go the easiest way. I'll probably just go for the reds and boom. Something like this. And yeah, I mean, you know, very quick, it's not too bad. The sky is cracking, all that stuff, you need to do some noise reduction, etc. But okay, one, two, three, four, five, six nodes. Obviously, you need to understand the premises of what I've done, you know, input, color, space, gamma, output, this, that, and the other. So it's a bit complicated, really. Um, now, it works. I've done it for a lot of time, a lot of people do it, I'll still do it probably, but yeah, in comparison to that, Let's jump to Dehancer now, the topic of this video. Boom, this is my note tree with Dehancer. Now you might be thinking, oh, this is not just Dehancer, it's also seven nodes. You're not wrong. However, look, if I deselect everything and I only turn on Dehancer, most of the work is done by Dehancer. The rest is basically noise reduction. I've done a bit of like balance adjustment here. Um, sky was cracking so I adjusted that to black point and then it's just sharpening what I'm saying is 
This is with everything. This is just the answer. Let's do full screen. Oh, this is not full screen, is it? Okay, just the answer. And then I did some extra work to get it here. Bit of drama, bit of black adjustment, no more noise, so on and so forth. But yeah, basically the answer gives you the look in one node. Now, let's see. Let me turn this all on. Okay, boom. We have another uh, version of this. And now we'll just use the answer and see how easy it is to get there. One node, boom, the answer. Ouch, when you drop it in, it's gonna do some nasty stuff. Don't panic, the way it works is basically a bunch of tabs are enabled by default. Turn them off, maybe there's a setting to automatically have them off every time. But for the sake of demonstration, when you start it's like this, everything's off, now you're back to basically nothing. Just log. Okay, now if you're a beginner, you don't know exactly what you're doing, all you want to do is easily be able to make your footage look good, nice. Source. In input you have source, it lets you choose your camera. They have a bunch of models, that's crazy. So here I was saying DJI Air 2S, yes sir they have it. Boom, format, D-log, and boom, that's it. Look at this. Log. I only just selected my camera in one node. You don't need to know anything at all. That's all I've done. And this is what we have. I mean, if you ask me honestly, this is good to go. This is good to go. Right. This is the, convention, the conventional way. I've done this in five seconds, really. This I put more work into. Okay, this is my extended great with the answer and this is just by inputting your camera and stuff okay mine is different maybe i don't know to my taste it looks a bit more dramatic cinematic but this one's good to go like in one click honestly you can't do better than this all right now what i was saying who this is for if you're a perfect beginner and you have a camera then all you need to do is import your footage input the details and you've got this, you can be done instantly pretty much. Now, if you want to learn a bit more, if you're more advanced, then you have a bunch of tabs here. I close them all, it's a bit of a mess. Okay, this is all you have. Maybe, I don't know if I'm gonna go through all of them because it would take a lot of time, but okay, film, you can choose your film uh, stock. So in my grade, I use Kodak Gold 200. I think it's for photography mainly, but whatever. Enabled. Push and pull, if you don't know what that is, then what you can learn. Um, film developer, so basically, this takes you through the steps you would emulate a film, right? So it lets you develop your film, basically, in a digital work environment, which is really, really cool. Contrast boost does exactly what you would expect. You know, maybe we can drop the contrast just a bit to recover just a tiny bit of the shadows, gamma correction, you can mess with that if you want. I don't know, I don't think we need to, but oh, let's just push it just a bit. Color separation, cool, color boost. This is where you can inject a bunch of colors. I don't know, somewhere like here. Okay. Okay, well, we haven't done much, but look. Looking a bit more vibrant now. Film compress compression. Let's enable that. Now, what you can do is just compress where your blown out point is going to be pretty much. So look, very, very bright in the white, less bright. If I do this, it's more obvious. But yeah, I don't know. I think this is cool. It's a bit bright. Something like this looks good, I guess. And then again, you have the uh, color density again. Here you are hardly notice any difference, but it's here if you want to, tonal range. Look at the scopes when I'm doing this. Basically, you can play with your tonal range as well. And but, um, doing this with DaVinci's tools is possible, right? But it takes knowledge. Um, it's quite the precision work. And here, all you need to do is push a slider, really. It's very, very convenient. Expand. You can expand your black point. Pretty self-explanatory, boom, boom. So, I don't know. Da Vinci crashed, didn't it? 
Let's pick up. Da Vinci very rarely ever crashes uh, with the Hunter. I, I'd say that mm, sometimes, you know, I had a few crashes really, but I'm also screen recording at the same time in full HD, so, you know, it's a bit heavy probably, but sometimes it's not very often, but sometimes it makes it crash. Anyway, let's uh, pick back the pace. Where were we? Uh, oh, it didn't save anything, okay. Great, it saved up to this point. No, it did not. Okay, so we buy something like this. We buy something like this. Okay, okay. I'm kind of winging it, but you get the point. Boom. Okay. Now here's the fun part, you can enable the print, so you can choose here your 28, uh, 2383 print if you want to, boom, ouch, once again, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a recurrent theme, so you'll have to do a bit of back and forth, tonal contrast, you can dial that back, for starters, maybe you can drop your exposure just a bit, maybe you can target the whites to be more towards the yellow greenish like I did uh, in my lid. And then, you know, it's a matter of juggling with these settings a bit, which is, you know, that's what I'm saying. If you want to do the film print, then you need to commit to a bit of work, you know, anyway. It's not just going to happen in one click and boom, Hollywood. But this makes it very easy still, I think. So, okay, density, maybe we can add a bit. Now we have some real proper color separation going on and you can see my d-log footage is starting to crack here it's just not having it um but yeah you can use some noise uh reduction and then you have the color head so you know this is kind of cool if you want to so the highlights i was saying I, i'd like it them to be a bit yellowish sort of add a bit of drama you can see what it's done now boom boom once again it's not perfect but okay Mid tones, maybe we'll leave this. Shadows, blue, mm -mm, maybe a bit of like this. Let's go back to our black point. Drop this just a notch. Boom. Film grain, okay. If I add some grain, I'm, I'm sure you can see this on YouTube, but if I do it properly, then you probably won't be able to see it, so I will forego it. But you can add some grain and it works very, very well. On your screen, it will look beautiful. For YouTube, I don't know. Halation, maybe not the best example for a halation, but let's zoom in. Let's remove the gallery again. Yeah. Okay, and then, boom. Now I guess you can see it, amplify. Let's boost everything to the max. We've got some crazy halation going on now. I don't know, you can add a bit of it if you want. It's too, too much, eh? Bad. Okay. Oh, it's very, very slight, but maybe we can... Okay. What? Bloom. We have the bloom. The bloom is great as well. You probably can see it. It adds like that dreamy bloom, really, that's what it is. I didn't even have to touch anything. I think it looks pretty good for this one if you want to add a bit of like dreamy vibes to it. And then you have the vignette. I'm not going to explain what a vignette is. And then you have a bunch of stuff here that you probably won't use too much for uh, your color grade. And here we are. Before, after, before, after. I mean, you, know, you like it, you don't like it. Sky is cracking once again. You'll have to do like I did in my grade and put some noise reduction, maybe a bit of blur just to get rid of it. Or if you do grain, if it's not for YouTube, grain will cover it as well. But yeah, that's why I chose a DJI video to do this because if I take a stellar camera, then you know it makes it very easy. DJI is probably not the easiest to color grade nicely. So if Dehenser can, you know, make DJI look very, very great, then it's a very good sign. Here we are, just with one node. I think it's it's pretty awesome, really. D-Log, boom, have some. Really hard to replicate color separation. Um, apart from the sky cracking a bit, I mean, you know, this is very dark. It's quite dark to begin with, but nothing's like gone. Nothing's like a 
poachy black patch or anything. You still see your houses in the shadows and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty great, if you ask me. Boom, this was with the con conventional way. And this is my grade. All right, so now we're in uh, another timeline, just for the sake of doing a different example. This shot is from uh, the last video I made with Petit Sneaky, where we took uh, portraits of the cherry blossom. And this is one of the bureaus in that video. And I graded this with Dehancer as well. Obviously I did a bit more than just that again, but if I were to turn everything off and just turn Dehancer on, this is basically log. So this was shot on the Sony a7 IV. Better data than with a DJI drone. And boom, this is what you get. So if you were to just use Dehancer, and you know, I adjusted with this as well. So I mean, I could easily drop the black point a bit. I don't know, somewhere around here. And then, I don't know, with the tint, a little bit like this, and boom, okay. Log, Dehancer. I don't know if you can see the grain, but it looks on my screen. I mean, I I use these, no problem. That's good to go. One node once again. And then once you add the stuff I've done on the side, then, okay. Well, I adjusted a bit, so it probably shouldn't look like this really. Because uh, I was going for a bit of a faded kind of thing with this one. But yeah, well, this is the final grade pretty much, something like this. So yeah, without it, with it. All right, and here's another way you can use it. You don't have to build your entire grade on Dehancer. You can have like, so this is a shot from a previous hiking video. The grade's already done. If you look at it, it's what I told you. I converted from Sony to DaVinci wide gamut, and then I converted to Rec. 709, Cineon Log, uh, and I put the DaVinci built-in Kodak 2383 LUT, and this is good as it is. I can add an extra node after the Rec. 709 conversion, add the Hensor and source Rec. 709 because we've already done the conversion. And then, okay, it does that. So you can work from here if you want, but as far as I'm concerned, the grain is done. So I remove all that stuff. You could add some grain if you wanted to, why not? Let's add some grain. It's probably not gonna show too much on YouTube, but and something like here. Yeah. Looks good to me. Before, after. But then you can add some bloom. We've got some nice lights and stuff. I didn't have a black mist filter with me, so you could turn on bloom. Boom. Not even gonna touch anything really. Nothing, and then with the enhancer we have bloom and grain. Maybe it's a bit heavy on the grain. That's kind of okay. So yeah, you can use it like that too if you want to. Pretty easy, works very well. This will conclude our review. I think, you know, as I demonstrated, it will fit a whole bunch of people really. If you're a beginner and you want something that will give you nice looks in a few clicks without you knowing too much while you learn your way up, then this will do just that for you. If you're more advanced, you probably don't need me to tell you, but this is a very complete and well done product. Works wonders, definitely something I'm, I'd be very, very happy to have in my uh, toolkit. And yeah, there's a few different ways you can use it. You can only just use, you know, bloom, halation, certain effects. If that's what you want to do, just add the grain on top of your pre-existing grades. And I think you can get like, just certain effects as well, if that's only that that you're interested in. But I think it works very well as a full entire package. So there should be, I think, links in my description where you can go check out the packages and like the plugins and all that stuff, what works with your softwares, etc. So if you're interested, go have a look. And yeah, I'll let you go. I'll probably play some before afters and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Take care. Peace.